Hey, you, I need you to hit the subscribe button below. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Today's class is called Discretion, the Trait of Wisdom. Who going to read? You going to read for me? Uh, I guess you got to read. About to hear today. <laughs> All right. Um, discretion, the trait of wisdom. Um, uh, let me see here. Um, uh, I always forget his brother's name every week. Come every week. Nope, with the uh, Bane man. <laughs> I was born in the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> what What does the word discretion mean? Discretion is to caution, to be cautious. Okay, good. I like that. I like that. You, you, you on the right path. You on the right path. So I take that. All right, give me uh, Esau's definition. I sent you bring up the first one and then the second one after that. Should be the Webster's. I think I did it first. Or the Miriam. Yeah. All right, so discretion, read that. Uh, definition of discretion. And it says individual choice or judgment. Uh-huh. Uh, B. Power of free decision or latitude of choice within certain legal bounds. Uh huh. The uh number two, the quality of having or showing discernment or good judgment. That's the one that we're gonna use today. The majority of the time, the quality of having or showing discernment or good judgment. The quality of being discreet, circumspection. Read verse three. I mean, um, the third one. Number three, ability to make responsible decisions. That's a heavy one as well. All three of these are ones that we want when we um talking about this class today. All right? Discretion, the trait of wisdom. So it's, it's the ability to make good judgment calls. In your life, um, all of us have a certain level of knowledge. Um, knowledge is one thing. When you have the spirit of discretion, now you're rolling in a spirit of wisdom. Now, you, when you use discretion, you have the traits of wisdom. It's one thing to know what to do. It's another thing to do it, and it's another way to carry it out the right way. Like Elder Kanai used to say all the time, you can be right about a situation, but you can be wrong in the way you handle it. All of that goes back to the spirit of discretion, the spirit of discernment. So we're going to go into that in three aspects of our lives today. We want to go about discretion on the job, in our marriage, and in the truth, all right, as we go throughout. But we're going to get there in a second. Go to the next part, uh, the next picture I sent you. The synonyms of discretion. Bring those up. All right. Uh, read those synonyms. Yes, sir. Uh, synonyms for discretion. Circumspection, uh huh, care, uh huh, carefulness, uh huh, caution. You see that your brother was right on point. Caution, it's 
uh, in the world, they say you think before you speak or you think before you act. Um, a lot of times when we you, when you see Israel, they do not have the spirit of discretion. Even though we have all these classes, we go to the school, all many, however many times we watch YouTube videos, we don't have the spirit of caution or carefulness. Or keep good read through some of these ones. Uh, wariness. Uh huh. Cher, cher, cheriness. Uh huh. Uh, guardedness. Uh huh. Tact. That's what I want right there. Hold on that word right there. Tact. Who knows what the word tact means in their words? I want somebody to define the word tact because that's a worldly term uh, that we use a lot. I know growing up in sports, they use that word a lot. Any of you in the business world or uh, leadership in the world, they use the word tact a lot. Anybody want to take a shot? And my brother's going to take a shot. All right. Shalom, leadership. Hey, shalom, shalom. I would think, say, tact would go into, like, tactics, a way how to approach someone. Okay, okay. Good, good. Uh, Let's get... Strategize with it. Yeah, you get, you almost there. You almost there. You're along the right path. Uh, pull up that. No, look at the opposite. What did the opposite say? Um, opposite. Uh, indiscretion. Indiscretion. The opposite of discretion is indiscretion, meaning you're not careful. You don't have caution. You don't have concern. You don't have tact. All right. Um, give me the definition of tact. All right, read that. The uh, definition of tact. Adroit, adroitness uh -huh. and sensitivity in dealing with others. Or with difficult issues. So, it's sensitivity in dealing with others with difficult issues. It's easy to have tact in a, uh, well, I mean, you don't need the use of tact in a basic scenario. For example, two people um, have sex, they're not married yet. You don't have to have tact in that situation. Hey, the Bible says you got to do A, B, C, D. Um, a situation where you do have to use tact, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, with what we deal with in the body last year, we had a, a sister who's missing. We don't know if she's passed away, if she's alive. We don't know if the brother in the body did it, if he didn't. All of that stuff, you have to use wisdom and tact and discretion when dealing with certain certain issues that arise. That only comes with the spirit of discretion. All right, um, go to the next one. Go to the next one. Um, all right. Read that. Definition of tact. This is the key part I want. Number one, a keen sense of what to do. A keen sense, meaning you are aware, you understand how your words are going to play in somebody else's mind before you say them. You're, you, 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 you're, you're, you're worried about everything and how it's going to play out. You have a care of what's going on. Read it again. A keen sense of what to do. Of what to do, meaning your actions. Or say, in, or say, read, in order to maintain good relations with others or avoid offense. Now, that's something that we don't see a lot of in the black and Hispanic community. The spirit of discretion, which is the spirit of tact, which is a keen sense, meaning you are very aware of what's going on. You are aware of how your words are going to affect others. You are aware of how your judgment is going to affect others. Because at the end of the day, you want to maintain good relations with others. That's the spirit of discretion. So, uh, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. So, coming into the truth, um, coming into to the truth, a lot of us don't have the spirit of discretion. A lot of us do have the spirit of discretion. Um, but the first one I'm going to go over is when you come into the truth and you don't have that spirit. Matthew 18 and 6. Because when we come into the truth as adults, I'm dealing with the adults, um, you may not have had the um, training or been in a certain atmosphere where you needed to um, use the spirit of discretion or deal wisely. You may not be put in those situations. I'll give you an example. If you are a manual labor, maybe you just, um, let's say you um, you change tires for a living. You're not in a situation where you have to deal with brothers and sisters on a daily basis, where things are at high stakes, so on and so forth. So you may not have that spirit. 
You may deal rash with brothers and sisters. You may deal rough. You may not be understanding. You may not be aware of how your words are playing on other people, so on and so forth. You may not have that spirit. So coming into the truth, you got to apply these scriptures. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 18 and verse 3. Uh-huh. And he said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted. Except what? Except ye be converted. Uh-huh. And become as little children. Uh-huh. Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So all of us have to be converted, meaning we got to change. In the world, the first question you get asked when you meet um, somebody of an adult is, what's your occupation? In the world, your occupation pretty much determines who you are. That is the exact opposite in the truth. That is just something you do. Your occupation does not determine who you are and your characteristics as a person. What do I mean by that? Um, let's say I work fast food, and um, you won't have certain traits where you wouldn't think you would have certain traits as a pastor. That's what that's what all these men are. The, the scripture says, give me that Jeremiah real quick. You won't see a pastor in the world working, doing fast food, or doing, uh, what's what's another job that may not be, look, being a janitor, or um, what's another job that may be looked down upon that people may not think they have the spirit of wisdom. Yeah, restaurant, anything, anything of that nature. In a yeah, certain, yeah, sanitation, welder, somebody that work with their hands, uh, carpet, carpentry, so on and so forth. In the world, when you say that I'm this or that occupation, uh, you expect certain things out of that individual with the way they carry themselves. But in this truth, that's that that's not the case. Our all the traits that we supposed to have, regardless of what you do, is in First Timothy three. All of those attributes should be um, displayed by the men. Read that scripture. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 15. Uh-huh. And I will give you pastors. And I will give you what? And I will give you pastors. So a lot of times when we come into the truth, yes, we got ranks, soldiers, officers, captains, deacons. At the end of the day, all of us are pastors. So in your mind, when you think of uh, the, the pastors of the churches, those are the attributes that all of us should have, regardless of what your occupation is, regardless of what you do. The same way uh, they deal with the people, they mingle with the people, they talk with the people, they understand the people. Those are the traits and skills that all of us should possess. Read. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, uh -huh. which shall feed you with knowledge uh -huh. and understanding. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And we always know that the first way you feed somebody with knowledge is your own personal example. Go to uh, The Rock real quick, 10 and 21, real quick. Show y'all something. The book of Sirach, chapter 10, verse 21. Uh-huh. The fear of the Lord. The what? The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Read. Goeth before the obtaining of authority. So before you're in a position of authority, uh, you must fear the Lord. Nobody, the, the Lord don't work like that. You have to show and display a certain level of fear before he'll put you in that position of being a pastor. So going back to where we're at. You got to be changed. You got to be converted. Why? Give me Luke 7 and 31. This is what God says about the children of Israel in these last days. At that time and at this time, dealing with the spirit of discretion. The book of Luke chapter 7 verse 31. Uh -huh. And the Lord said, whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? So he's, Christ said, what should I liken the men of this generation? Meaning what can I compare them to? Read. And to what are they like? And to what? are they like read they are like unto children they are what they are like unto children they are like unto children so us coming into this truth and you don't have that spirit you got to understand that you got to be retaught you got to gain these certain skills and attributes to become the pastor that god called you to be to become the man of the lord that god called you to be to be in his army to be in his military you have to gain the spirit of discretion. And God says, right now, we don't have that. Read it again. They are like unto children uh -huh. sitting in the marketplace uh -huh. and calling one to another, saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. Uh -huh. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. We have mourned unto you, and we have not met. So we, God is saying that if our men are like unto children, uh, to Zion, right? That's your name? You changed it. All right, I got a question for you. If God 
said that we are like unto children. Do children um, have foresight? Meaning, do they think? Do they think before they act? No, they don't. Right. So, so God is comparing us to children, meaning we don't think before we act. So, do they have the spirit of discretion? No. No. So God is letting us know that that spirit of discretion, you can pass the mic back, is not in us as a nation before we come into the truth. Because if you have the spirit of discretion, you have a keen sense of what to do or say in order to maintain good relations. All of us know or we, we, we were that brother or sister that has ruined a friendship or relationship because of something we said. That was rash. That was quick. That we didn't. We didn't. We didn't think about how these words were going to affect someone else. But we got to gain that spirit. Go to Matthew chapter nine, in verse sixteen. Matthew chapter nine and verse sixteen. If you got something else to bring it up. All right. So uh, once again, we're going over the spirit of discretion. The spirit of discretion. The book of Matthew chapter nine, verse sixteen. So when we come into this truth, the Bible says we're like children. The Bible says we got to uh, be born again. We got to be converted. We got to be changed. I'm going to show you what happens when you don't do that. Read. No man put it a piece of new cloth uh -huh. unto an old garment. Read. For that which is put in to fill it up, take it from the garment, uh -huh. and the rent is made worse. Read. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles. So. Christ is using a, a parable of wine. I'm going to worry about the wine skin. So he says, neither do men uh, put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break. And the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. Who can explain that? Who can explain that for me? Uh, Can I, can you read it again? Thanks, I read it two times. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, verse uh, 17. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. Because, uh, like, when you, for wine to taste the way, for, for wine to taste the way it takes it, taste is usually kept for a while. But like the combustion inside the bottle of the wine is, is like it's the combustion to bust the old glass because the old glass already used up the old the wine that was in there previously mm -hmm. already done used the glass it's like the stuff that's in the glass to keep it. So I can't really explain it, but I know it. I'm you saying. saying it perfect. You, you know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm following because so I know like, the answer. That's why. Yeah. Okay. I don't think they understood you, but I got you. I got you. All right, who else want to take a shot? He, he gave y'all the answer. I just want somebody else to put it in better terms. See if anybody else knows. Uh, shalom. shalom. Um, is it speaking about like uh, becoming a new person, new body? Um, so all the um, you need a new body and new like the new, our new knowledge of, of the Bible that comes into us. We can't put that into our old bodies or our old ways of thinking. There you go. You 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 hit it. You hit it. I'm gonna clear it up even further. All right, so look, when we come into this truth, do y'all know stuff? Yeah, you know stuff, right? I mean, you made it this far. Some of y'all, 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 20, 30, 40 years old. You know stuff, right? I hope so, right? <laughs> y'all know something? No. Sheesh. All right, hopefully these brothers know something. All right. Maybe they don't know nothing. All right, so you know <laughs> things. You know worldly knowledge, right? You may have known, you may have been, uh, you had knowledge of the Bible in the world or whatever it is. A lot of times what brothers and sisters make the mistake of is when they come into the truth, they try to hold on to some of their understandings that they have. I give you an, uh, give you an example. A brother may have been a drug dealer in the, in the world. He comes into the truth and he tries to tie the commandments into him selling drugs. What do I mean by that? He says, well, if I keep the commandments, God said he'll make us a blessed and high nation. So now you just continue to sell drugs, but I'm doing it in the name of the Lord. Right. Or this is a real life example. A brother was on a Christian. He was on that prosperity doctrine. Mm. If I keep the commandments, I'm going to be a millionaire. And that was in his mind so much that when he was going through trials and tribulations, he left 
because he was like, well, if I'm doing what the Lord told me to do, why am I not being successful? Why am I not prospering? Because what, he didn't he didn't read Sirach 2 and 1. He didn't read the book of Job. He didn't have, he tried to mix both of his understandings into the scripture. Y'all understand that? I just want to clarify what y'all said. So, when you put wine in a bottle, when you put wine in a bottle, it expands, right? It expands, like y'all already said. It expands. Uh, what he said, he said it combusts, right? A ferment. It widens out the bottle. It widens the bottle. So if you put more new wine, which is the understanding of the scriptures that we're getting now, Deuteronomy 28, understanding the book of Revelation, understanding John 3.16, you put all that into that old vessel. The vessel breaks now because it can't go through that two times. Y'all understand that? That process can't happen. You got to become a completely new person. You can't be halfway in. That's why it says, uh, if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out. You got to be hot or cold. You got to be a new bottle of wine, or you're going to stay as that old bottle of wine. That's what's going to happen. Go ahead. You have something? Well, I was just thinking, when, the way you was explaining, I was thinking about in Second Kings right. 17, how, I'll, I'll just read it right quick, uh, 33. It says, they feared the Lord and served their own gods after the manners of the nations whom they carried away thence. When you're talking about bringing in from the, the old, you still trying to operate in that old spirit, right. but you take on what you learn in here. There you, go. you try to mingle those things. There you go. Absolutely. I give you all an example, real life example. Really know who he is. Brother had a weird uh, haircut, weird hairdo. I said, hey, bro, that ain't, uh, you know, all things are law for everything ain't expedient. I said, you look, you, I said, Ima imagine if you was a bishop and he had he had the same look you had. He said, well, where I come from, this is a sign of manhood. I said, okay. I said, well, you learned that. He started laughing. Because he understood, you didn't learn that here. You learned, that's not that's not in the scriptures. I'm telling you. I'm giving you some understanding, some wisdom. But he reverted back to what he knew in the world. Y'all understand what I'm saying? That's why you got to put new wine in new bottles. The book of Sirach, chapter uh, of Second Ezra, chapter 14, <laughs> verse 34. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue. You will what? Subdue. Subdue what? Your own understanding. So when we come into this truth, we have to subdue our own understanding. Read. And reform your hearts. Uh-huh. Ye shall be kept alive. Read. And after death, ye shall obtain mercy. So when we subdue our own understanding, because we do that, we will gain life. We will gain life after this. Because right now, we're not living. This ain't really living. That's why it says when we deliver it out of here, it's going to be as if it was a dream because this ain't real. Waking up 9 to 5, getting home, at, you, I leave at nighttime, get home at nighttime. Wake up, do it again. That ain't, that ain't living. That's not living. That's, it's going to be like a dream. It's going to be like a dream. All right? Uh, but we got to subdue our own understanding. When brothers and sisters give you counsel, they give you, they give you advice on certain things scripturally, you got to be willing to say, you know what, what I've been taught, my understanding, the Bible says uh, we like children. The Bible says we were destroyed as a people. If if the men before you and the sisters before you are godly individuals, you're going to take that counsel. You're going to say, you know what, that brother or sister is right. I, I need to do A, B, C, or D. And by doing that, you gain everlasting life. So we're just giving you a little bit of the definition of discretion. So. Uh, that was coming from a life without the understanding or knowledge of um, discretion or having wisdom in the world, so to speak. You also have brothers and sisters that do come out of uh, positions in the world where they do have discretion. They do have wisdom at some level. You may have been a lawyer. You may have been a politician. You may have been uh, somebody of status, of money. And when you are in those positions, you learn how to carry yourself a certain way. They have certain. Uh, that's why they say uh, when when ball players get they make it to the when they make it to the league they get white girlfriends because they understand the um, the atmosphere that they're going to be in. You have high maintenance dinners. You have a uh, community charity event. You have all these different things. If you have a woman that doesn't understand how to carry themselves in those situations, you're going to make yourself look a fool. So what do they do to ease the, the, the transition into that new lifestyle? They make sure they have a spouse that's used to that. All right? But so what I'm going into is 
I said that to say this. Some of us in here, and will come in here, you already have this spirit of discretion, meaning you know how to carry yourself. But what happens? We come into the truth, we learn who we are, we learn we're the Israelite, and now we kind of forget that. What do I, I give you an example. You may be a, a banker. You, 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 you have the approval of loans. Somebody, they come to you to, to approve a loan or not. And now, because you know you're an Israelite, Esau comes in, 880 credit score, got a got a 20-page tw- business plan, and you say, and they, they ask him for the loan, and you say, nah, your, 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 um, your destination is hell. Huh? You, you lost the spirit of discretion, of wisdom. You lost what you already gained because you got scriptures. I give you, go to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 8 and 1. That's what I mean by that. But before, you knew how to deal. You learned how to make deals. You knew how to uh, mingle with brothers and sisters of different nations, meaning they're not Israelites. But you understood that this is just a job. This is not real. Your job is not real. <laughs> Read that. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Uh huh. Now as touching things offered unto idols. We know that we all have knowledge. We know that what? We all have knowledge. So, brothers that didn't want to answer the question, brothers, y'all got knowledge. Y'all understand that, right? Read it again for them. They still confused. We know that we <laughs> all have knowledge. We all have knowledge, brothers. We all have knowledge. Read. Knowledge puff it up. What happens? Knowledge puff it up. But knowledge puffs you up so much to the point that now you've forgotten your worldly wisdom because the scriptures they should supersede everything, but now you've forgotten how to carry yourself. You've forgotten your 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 wisdom that you need to survive in this present world. Read. But charity edifies. But charity edifies. <laughs> edifies. Go to uh, Luke 16 and 8. So, let me show you that you, brothers and sisters that come into the truth um, of status or of different uh, backgrounds and so on and so forth, God calls that that uh, those attributes, that is wisdom. That is discretion. I'm going to prove it to you. Read that. Luke chapter 16, verse 8. Uh-huh. And the Lord commended the unjust steward. And what? And the Lord commended the unjust steward. Read. Because he had done wisely. Uh-huh. For the children of this world. For the what? For the children of this world. The Bible says the children of this world. Read. Are in their generation uh-huh. wiser than the children of light. So. Who can who can uh give me the understanding on that? Who can give me the understanding on that? Let me hear um uh, knock knock at the door. Said it right. All right, there we go. You Judah, right? <laughs> knock at the door. You Junior. You Judah, right? Yeah, you Judah, man. Shalom, leadership. Hey, shalom, shalom. Happy Sabbath, bro. Happy Sabbath. Um, so this is talking about worldly knowledge, the the things that people uh, spend time in doing, they learn it real well, and they have that knowledge. Like right. We're just talking about like Perry County. They may have a lot more of the knowledge than, than we do. Right. Okay. You almost there. You almost there. Somebody <laughs> else. Somebody else. You, you're right, mom, you're right, but I'm almost like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he, okay. He, he almost there. I okay. get it. He drew it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what you got? Um, what he's saying, I believe what he's saying is that uh, basically we, in the world, we had, we had, like you said, we had our worldly wisdom, but we know how to utilize that wisdom to make certain friends, right. to make, uh, to benefit us. Right. But now that we in the truth, we the, we in the light, we we forget how to use it. So what what basically what we were saying was what the saying is when you was in, you know how to yield your you know how to yield your wisdom to your benefit. But yeah, that's yeah. what you need to be trying to do right now with the commandments as well as with like when you're trying to go to work or you're trying to get something. Right. Utilize that worldly wisdom to benefit you as well. If you can help out your people. Hey, go can, go all right, I'm gonna give y'all a quick example to help y'all understand. Um. Like, you have Titus 2, right? The aged men and the aged women are supposed to speak to young, teach the younger ones, right? So I, used, I was giving somebody this example recently. When I was young, that's when we, we would buy cars, 15, 16, the car needed work. 
you ain't have a bunch of money. So you bought a car, but you need you needed help getting that car running. You had that old brother in the neighborhood, you knew know how to fix things. Now he might be a wino. So you go buy him some beer, wine, or have somebody older buy some beer and wine, and you get him to come and fix your car. And you listen to all the stories and all of that all day, but you watch everything he do. So that moving forward, when you needed to have your car fixed, now you had the understanding, you knew the, you got the wisdom of the tools to get, and now you got the wisdom of how to actually perform the action. You went there, though, and you sat under him, and you appeased him so that you could get what you needed, which was that understanding out of it. A lot of our, a lot of the y'all young folks, y'all don't have that wisdom to do that today. You don't have that wisdom to 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 go to the older folks and older in the in the body and get the understanding. You know what I'm saying? Go and you, you know what, Cap? I'm, I'm gonna come hang out with you one day, and uh, I'm gonna help you cut the grass or whatever you do. You know what I'm saying? Pick your brain. You're absolutely right. Can I read that scripture one more time? Give y'all another example. Luke chapter 16 and verse 8. Uh-huh. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. Uh-huh. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. So the children, what did it say? The children of this world are wiser mm-hmm. than the children of light. We right. are the children of light. We are the Israelites. We understand who we are. We know we are above all people. But the children of this world, Esau, the, uh, the Israelites who don't know who they are, I give you a basic example on finance. Um, a lot of the people in the world they set up credit cards and things like that for their children while they're young, and when they when they turn eighteen or, or twenty or whenever, they already have a high credit score. They got a credit line that's that's long because they had it for ten years, even though they never knew they had it. But we on the other side. We the children of light. We don't know about credit. We're trying to get it fixed now, so on and so forth. That's just a small example. So in this world, they are wiser than us because we don't use the things of this world to our advantage. You understand what I'm saying? Also, like he said, we don't have any tact in how we deal with brothers and sisters. Uh, we get to that point now, but in the past, we used to be really bad, really bad on social media especially. The way we dealt with family members, uh, other people, example, just was, it was it wasn't good. That's how the children of this world are wiser than us. Some example. So, I will give you an example of one of our forefathers, who was an Israelite, knew who he was, but he was he had the spirit of discretion and he used it to his advantage. Go to Genesis forty-one and thirty-three. Genesis forty-one and thirty-three. The book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 33. Uh-huh. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man, discreet and wise. So, Pharaoh had to look for a man that had the spirit of discretion. Read. And set him over the land of Egypt. And do what? And set him over the land of Egypt. So, these positions, you brothers and sisters, when you're, when you, when you're moving up uh, the ladder in your jobs and so on and so forth, these are the attributes that people are looking for, the spirit of discretion. Bishop said it all the time. The reason why a lot of young, black, talented individuals don't get uh, positions of power is because Esau looks at us and he says, when you give a black man, a black woman power, we don't know how to handle it because we don't have the spirit of discretion. Only thing you know is yourself, but discretion, that spirit, it revolves around everything else around you. You're not worrying about yourself. It's a spirit of charity. So, read that scripture again. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise uh-huh. and set him over the land of Egypt. And set him over the land of Egypt. Now, this is talking about Joseph. They set up Joseph. Now, I'm going to show you. Joseph dealt with the Most High at a very, very high level. But even though he did, he didn't get puffed up like some other brothers and sisters do who the most how I allowed them to come into certain positions or have a certain understanding, level of understanding. Go to Genesis 40, and we're going to read verse 8 through 13. I'm going to show you. Joseph could have easily been puffed up and not have the spirit of discretion if he wanted to. 
the book that. of Genesis, chapter 40 and verse 8. Uh-huh. And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. Uh-huh. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Uh-huh. Tell me then, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph, and he said unto him, and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes, and Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, uh-huh. and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand, and Joseph said unto him, this is the interpretation of it. Uh-huh. The three branches are three days. Three? Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place. Uh-huh. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou was his butler. So, how do we know that Joseph knew that it wasn't of his power that he was able to interpret that dream? It's right here in the scripture. I just want to see if y'all follow along. How do we know that Joseph knew that it wasn't of his strength that he was able to interpret that dream? Got the mic. Oh, Kim, you got the mic. Right there. In front of y'all, Kim. In front of you. In front of you. There you go. Wake up. Wake up. Um, Brother Josiah, by the way. Yeah, um, Brother Josiah. Um, verse 8. Yep. When he said, uh, do not interpretations belong to God. Good. So, the Most High dealt with Joseph on a very, very high level. He gave him the understanding of a dream. Same thing he did with Daniel. When you're able to uh, gain that level of wisdom and, and knowledge and power, that's power to be able to, for God to, to, to come and speak to you and give you an understanding of a dream, something that you don't see. Somebody tell you something, and you're able to, to gain the ability to interpret that. It's a high level of understanding. But we read the next chapter over that he still had the spirit of discretion. He didn't He didn't become puffed up with pride thinking, well, God got me. I can, I can it is what it right, right, right. I can interpret a dream. Call on God right now. <laughs> what was you thinking about last night? <laughs> but he didn't roll like that. He right. still had the spirit of discretion and humbleness so much that Pharaoh was able to appoint him over his whole nation. That's the that's the that's an example of you staying staying uh level headed, so to speak. Go to Matthew chapter ten and verse three. Right now, I'm just showing you that we have examples of brothers and sisters that come out of different backgrounds. Everybody that come into the truth ain't down and out, just got out of prison, uh, uh, got three baby mamas. That ain't everybody in the truth. All right? That ain't the example that our forefathers had. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, and verse 3. Uh-huh. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the uh-huh. publican. And what? Uh, Matthew, the publican. A publican. Who can tell me what was the publican's job? What was the publican's job? Uh, uh, Brother Nefidel. He was like a tax collector. He was a tax collector. So, tax, he was a tax collector. So that means he worked for who? Everybody can say it at the same time. He worked for Esau, right? Everybody say Esau. Don't nobody. Wait, wait, <laughs> which, 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 what uh nation at this time? Rome. All right, Rome. Rome was ruling during this time period, so he had a government job, right? What they call that? Um, uh, what they call it? What do you call it? Affairs, federal affairs. No, what's the tax office called? Yeah, the yeah. IRS. There you go. He had an internal revenue service job. That's a very, very um, high esteem. You got to be respected. You got to go through certain levels of background check, all this different stuff. And he came into the truth. He was a publican. So he had the spirit of discretion. He had to go in and understand, all right, you got to you gotta give this amount, that amount, so on and so forth. He had that spirit on him. And when he came into the truth, he didn't let all that go. He kept, he kept that, that spirit or that understanding with him. If he didn't, he wouldn't have been able to keep his job. Because what if the first day Christ came and told him, hey, listen, this all this is going to go down. 70 AD coming, y'all, we're we going to fall away. He would have went up to, uh, uh, <laughs> who, who was ruling at that time? I forgot. Went up to one of the, uh, one of Herod, or Agrippa. Hey, you the devil. Right. Uh, what you think going to happen to his job? It didn't say he was a publican for a day. No, he kept his job during that time period. 
He used wisdom. Christ showed him everything. He showed him. Christ taught the 12 disciples a lot. A lot. So he knew exactly what he was dealing with. They knew they was Israelites then. So Christ wasn't dealing with, hey, Deuteronomy 28, you're the Israelites. No. Go ahead. You're not, uh, you just read the children of the world. Right. Or wiser than children of light. Think about these sleeper cells. Mm-hmm. Right. The other nations. How they can come yep. over here. And they, they and they don't just come over here and just get any old kind of job. Some of them be engineers, and your cardiologists. Your cardiologists would just do heart surgery on you and then go pull a bomb down the road. <laughs> <True. laughs> you know what I'm saying? True. But they blend in. Because they have the spirit of discretion. They're able to move with wisdom. Matthew was able to do that. From there, go to uh, Matthew 27 and verse 57. Matthew 27 and 57. I'm showing you some examples of our forefathers that had high position. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 57. Uh huh. When the even was come, there came a rich man. They of, came a what? They came a rich man. Read. Of Arimathea, Arim- mm-hmm. named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. So Joseph of Arimathea, a rich man, was one of Jesus' disciples. Once again, I'm just going, when you have money, you have power, you have status, you're in a different arena of what you're dealing with and how you're dealing. You can't carry yourself as a Negro. I'm going to say the other word that end with the, the A. Some of y'all say it with a hard R. <laughs> All right. But you got to carry yourself a certain way. But it's letting you know that he came from money. He was a rich man. Meaning what? He knew how to carry himself. Uh, from there, go to 1 Corinthians 7 and 31. And another example to show you that he had that spirit when Christ had died. That was him who went to uh, mm-hmm. beg for the body. So he knew how to deal. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 31. Uh-huh. And they that use this world. And they that what? That use this world. And they that use this world. We have to learn how to operate. In this world, everything ain't the white man is the devil. You got to learn how to say the white man is an upstanding Republican. (laughs) Created a great uh, democratic society that equal opportunity for blacks. (laughs) Read that again. And they that use this world uh-huh. as not abusing as it. As not abusing it. Read. For the fashion of this world passeth away. Right. That's what you got to understand in the back of your mind. All of this is only temporary. You can be on this earth for 80 years, 90 years, 100 years. What does that compare to eternity? That doesn't compare at all to eternity. So that's got to be your mindset. I'm just using this world for the time being. I'm buying time while I'm on this earth. Not saying you can't be successful. Not saying you can't move up the chain. I'm not saying, I'm actually saying the opposite. I want you to do all that. But use it with the understanding that it's not going to be here forever. That it's not real. So play your part in the matrix while you're in the matrix. And then you get out the matrix. You unplug. And then you get on what what was the ship they was on? Yeah, you get back on Nebuchadnezzar. And, and and we keep we keep going different places and, and solving missions. Then you plug back in at eight. You play your role and you get back out. That's what we're doing. This world, you just got to use it. That's all it is. It's a big game. And if you know how to play the game, you can be very successful. But you have to learn. And guess what? The funniest thing about it, officer, the whole game, the people that are the most successful in this world, they mm-hmm. use biblical principles. Right. Every book I, I read on, on the top leaders in the world, the top business owners in the world, they always sprinkle Bible scriptures in, in, the, in, the, in it. Read it. Read it. In, read it. Uh, what is his name? Carnegie and uh, Bill Gates. and uh, God. What's the other dude, man? He make a lot of leadership books. But when you read the books, they always biblical based. Always. And the book was written to us. They don't even apply the main stuff you're supposed to apply. They just read Proverbs and they're like, all right, cool. Sounds good. Why they got shrimp in their mouth? Well, you, you know, when we read, just to give an example, when we read 1 Timothy 5 and 8, it talks about providing for your house, right? 
So one of the ways Esau can manipulate his children is because since he provides, he has something to take from them. Mm. Like, you, you know, like one of the things is with their children, I'll cut you out the wheel. And that, that's a real threat. That is a real yeah. threat to be that cut is. out of a wheel. Right, right, right. Because like you said, and, and, and I know this from uh, dealing with some of them, they'll get their uh, um, children when they're our young children's age, they'll get um, the life insurance policy and pay it off in, in its entirety. Because at a young age, like they four or five years old, it's cheap. You can get the life insurance policy, and then they even can borrow from them and all of those things. But what I'm saying is, like you were saying, how they have them set up, you get them used to a certain lifestyle, right, right. and then you got that threat. Like, you like how you're living, don't you? Right. I told you not to do this and right. that, and they right. can pull that away from them. No, you're you absolutely right. It's the things we don't see. The reason why Johnny gets straight A's, every week he makes sure. You know, he got a $100,000 <laughs> policy at 18. <laughs> And he already got a full scholarship, so right. he good. He's like, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Buy a lot of like weed. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get into discretion. We're going to deal more with the, with the actual uh, spirit of discretion. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 1. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 1, we're going to read down the floor. How do you gain the spirit of discretion? The book of Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. Uh -huh. The Proverbs of Solomon, uh -huh. the son of David, king of Israel, See? to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, mm -hmm. to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment, and equity, to give subtility to the simple. To give subtility to the simple. Read. To the young man. And to the young man, read. Knowledge uh -huh. and discretion. You see that? Knowledge and discretion must be given to the young man. Because remember, when you're young, you don't, you're not able to think ahead. You're not able to reason on how things um, affect others outside of yourself. All of us can remember back to being 14, 15, 16, and nothing, I know sisters, everything was about you. And if they, they your, your, your mom or dad said anything against what you thought was right, it was, it was out the window. But a lot of times in black Hispanic communities, we we don't ever grow up out of that stage. We are still in that child mindset as adults. We never gain the spirit of wisdom and discretion and charity when it's not about you anymore. Read that again. To give subtility to the simple. Uh-huh. To the young man, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. To the young man, knowledge and discretion, because the young men need the spirit of discretion. Psalm twenty eleven and ten. Because to have discretion, you must have knowledge, you must have wisdom, you must have understanding. The Book of Psalms, chapter one eleven, verse ten. Uh huh. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So before you can get the spirit of discretion, you have to begin to keep the commandments. Because remember, bring back up the definition again of what discretion is. I don't want them to forget it. We got you up? All right. You got it. Read that again. Read it. Uh, discreet, careful, and circumspect in one's speech or actions, especially in order to avoid causing offense or to gain an advantage. So, the circumspect. I want discretion. Discretion, not discreet. You good? No, you ain't paying attention. All right. Sleep over there. Discretion. There we go. Read that. Discretion. The quality of behaving or speaking in such a way as to avoid causing offense or revealing private information. So you want to avoid offense or uh, to prevent from revealing private information or the freedom to decide what should be done in a particular situation. It's making good choices, essentially. You want to make discretion in a small word, making good choices. So let's get into it. Uh, discretion in the truth. We're going to go into a few different areas in the truth. First one we're going to deal with is counsel. When you come into the truth, a lot of times 
trying to think. Black people don't have mentors like like white people. A lot of times we don't have a mentor. We don't have a uh, what's another word they use? Um, a life coach or um, a guide in this world. We kind of just we we play it by 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 air in this in the world. Even our fathers don't don't take the role um, to the extent in the past they did. I remember I was talking to my dad one time, and I'm from uh, my dad's from Melbourne. We moved to Palm Beach, but anyway, Melbourne used to be a prominent black city. Every everything was black: black roofers, black plumbers, black tile, black everything. Everything was black. And I asked him because at the church, everybody everybody had their own business. They all went to the same church. They all put the money together. They got a nice church or whatnot. And I said, well, what happened to the businesses? Because now, you know, you can't find a black nothing. And he said, well, you know, the children get old. They, they do their own business, and then the business gone. So you never see that in white families. If your father had a good business, you were going to do whatever he did. He dug ditches, you dug ditches. He was a farmer, you were a farmer. Because in the business world, after the first three to four years after that, business is cake. And they leave it. They leave it to the children. Now the children is they idiots. They run the business to the ground. But if not, you just keep it rolling. You keep it rolling. But anyway, that story was important because it was like all these black businesses and none of them are around today. But all the children are still there. But none of them are running the businesses that they their fathers had set up for them. It's a few of them left, but it ain't as many as it was because. Um, why, why did I go there? Because I'm dealing with counsel. Oh, life coach, mentor. Because a counselor is basically a mentor. And that was, like I was, that's what I was going into. Your father or your mother should be your first mentor, your first life coach. But we don't have that. So you come into the truth, you have, you get counselors, you get mentors. But a lot of y'all find the wrong brother or sister to become that individual. And I'm going to show you scripturally how you should choose that um, brother or sister using the spirit of discretion. Sirach chapter 8 and verse 17. The book of Sirach chapter 8 and verse 17. Uh-huh. Consult not with a fool. Do what? Consult not with a fool. So the first scripture says when you're using the spirit of discretion, you want to make a good choice. Don't counsel with a fool. Can all y'all discern what a fool is? Yes, no, maybe. All right. Uh, here we go. Y'all said y'all could. Uh, Brother Todd, right? How do you know if somebody is foolish or not? Um, I I, I think it was um scripture, but I I believe the um Bible defines a fool as a person in sin. Absolutely so correct. Like, Give me that First Samuel thirteen and thirteen. You correct. All praise that brother on it. The rest of y'all had that? Y'all had that precept? Ah, they ain't had it. They just thought they knew. They thought they knew. <laughs> Go ahead, read that. The book come, of on, come on, come on, come on. Where we at? Seven seconds. <laughs> the book of 1 Samuel, seven, uh, 13, verse 13. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast what? Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast done foolishly. Read. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. You see that? So when you've done foolishly, you are not keeping the commandments. So the first thing uh, the Bible says is don't consult with a fool. If you see a brother or sister that's out of order, they ain't got a job, they ain't got married yet, uh, what, are, what are some other stuff that I don't see before? I don't, it's, it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's, it's a lot, yeah, it's a lot of things we can. You know, they're trying to teach you how to get in shape, and they got mm -hmm. a thirty pack. You know, and, and and not cut up, not cut up. Um, a thirty pack of brownies. What you said? You said you got to get a thirty pack. <laughs> read that. Read that. Read that. Uh, Sirach chapter eight verse seventeen. Uh huh. Consult not with a fool. Read. For he cannot keep counsel. So don't don't consult with brothers or sisters like that. Not saying you can't speak with certain individuals, but be careful what you say to individuals like that. Read. 
verse 18. Uh huh. Do not secret things. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Read I'm that sorry, again. I'm sorry. I apologize. Do no secret things. Do what? Do no secret things. The Bible says, do no secret thing. Read. Before a stranger. Uh huh. For thou knowest not what he will bring forth. So don't open your heart and your mind to the first brother or sister that said shalom to you. That's not the individual that you, you should be sharing your whole life story with off the jump. Like, yeah, I used to be a homosexual, and then I dealt with this, and I dealt with that. It's like, hey, wh what's your name again? Right. Oh, all right, yeah, cool. All right, yeah. Well, anyway, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Yes, this is a hospital, but <laughs> even in a hospital, when you walk in, right. you tell the person at the desk certain things, and then you go back to the certified uh, a doctor in the back that specializes in certain things. Y'all understand that? And then you get the real detail. A lot of y'all like this. You think the first person you see is the uh, the white coat. <laughs> they ain't got on the white coat. They just got a, uh, what do they call them thing? Uh, a name tag. No, nah, they ain't got scrubs. They got a name tag. They're a tent worker. All right? So y'all got to make sure you, you know who you're speaking with. All right, read that again, 18. Do no secret thing before a stranger, uh -huh. for thou knowest not what he will bring forth. Right, because they have all your business everywhere, because they don't have the spirit of discretion. Read. Open not thine heart to every man. Do what? Open not thine heart to every man. Open not thine heart to every man. Read. Lest he requite thee with a shrewd turn. So having the spirit of discretion is saying, you know what? I'm going I'm to feel this brother or sister out. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, some of y'all say that in a wrong connotation, meaning I'm going to see uh, uh, some, her brother say I'm going to test out leadership when they're giving orders and stuff. Now, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about with you dealing with, with personal issues, with you dealing with personal issues. There's nothing wrong with that because you want to get a feel for a brother or sister. All right, from there, go to um, The Rock 19 and verse 7. The Rock chapter 19 and verse 7. The Rock chapter 19 and verse 7. Uh-huh. Rehearse not unto another that which is told unto thee. Read it again. Rehearse not unto another that which is told unto thee. So this is for you counselors, you brothers that have been that have been around. It's not your job to rehearse everything that somebody tells you to every. You set up as a counselor, you become a 10, you become a 20. You have certain brothers and sisters under you that, that confide in you. It's not your job to then take that information and and spew it to, to whoever you want to. No, read it again. Rehearse not unto another that which is told unto thee. Uh-huh. And thou shalt fare never the worst. And thou shalt fare never the worst. Meaning nothing, nothing's going to come bad unto you because now you can be trusted. That brother or sister uh, has confidence in you that they can open up. And you're going to give them the scriptures to solve the solution. You can give them proper counsel, so on and so forth. But if you're doing that with the wrong individual, then that's that's a bad deal. Read verse 8. Whether it, it be to friend or foe, uh -huh. talk not of other men's lives. Read. And if thou canst, without offense, reveal them not. Right. Without offense, reveal them not. Meaning, I may be dealing, a brother may tell me something, and I'll be like, hey, I got I know you, I know you had a brother that dealt with this. How would you deal with this or deal with that? Right. That's without offense. Now, if it's this brother got hatred against this brother and I can come tell him his story now, I'm bringing up issues that can cause sin. You got to use discretion on how you deal. All right. From there, go to uh, Sirach chapter 6 and verse 6. So to prevent that from happening, your business being all over the place and on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and uh, what is, what's the other dancing app? Not TikTok. TikTok. All right, do a TikTok about this. To avoid that from happening, see what the Bible says. The book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 6. Uh-huh. Be in peace with many. Do what? Be in peace with many. The Bible says, be at peace with many. Read. Nevertheless, have but one counselor. You see that? Nevertheless, have but one counselor. Meaning, you're using discretion on who you share your problems with. Because, like I say, one day the brother may be here, the next day they're gone. Next day, they, they teamed up with an enemy at IUIC. Next thing you know, your, your business become hot news. Because you didn't use discretion. We've seen it happen many a time. 
So that's dealing with counsel. Like I said, I can't I can't stay on each uh, topic too long because I want to get through a few stages. The next one, everybody's favorite one. How many of y'all single in here? Raise your hand if you're single. Raise it high. Raise it high. Don't be ashamed. All right, Manoa got his hand up. Raise your hand, Manoa. He's single, ladies. <laughs> All right. All right, good, good, good. So the next stage that we got to use discretion is the proven stage. Yeah, the proven stage. Let's go to the book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 7. The book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 7. So using discretion in the proven stage, you got to make sure your antenna's up. Uh, Hey, uh, find me that clip on Friday. I want to show y'all that. Some of y'all may not know what I'm talking about when I say you got to have your antennas up. You you know what I'm talking about? Ah, uh, he hates you. Ah, <laughs> Levi, y'all don't watch movies, do y'all? Levi don't watch movies, man. I want to find this because I want I want y'all to know what I'm talking about when I say have your antennas up. I want I want where was your antenna? That's what I want, real quick. Go ahead, go ahead, bring it out. Right, you got something? All right, so while we're getting that, read that Sirach 6 and 7. The book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 7. Uh huh. If thou wouldest get a friend. If thou wouldest get a friend, read. Prove him first. Do what? Prove him first. So the Bible tells you before you get a spouse, before you get a counselor, well, we're dealing with proven right now, but before you get a spouse, your job is to prove that brother or prove that sister. That's your job. All right, here we go. Play that. Play that. How long is that? Two minutes? Mike. Mike. Get back. Play it. No, 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 no. Let him through. Let him through. Come on. Come on, you little I'm going to sue your ass. Come on. Excuse the language. No, no, no. Because I want to uh, I wanna uh, paint the picture for y'all. So they just got robbed. His store got robbed. Money Mike got robbed. Um, and a lot of y'all get robbed with your spouse because you ain't proven first. You ain't had your antennas up. So I'm going to show you what Money Mike said you got to do. Go ahead. Press play. Think about what your mama said. You all right? You know what I'm saying? I got a little razzle It's all right. My name, My name is uh, Money Mike, Mike Clay. How you doing? All, All right, then. Don't freeze hard. Hey, All right, what's happening? <laughs> this is uh, my young girl, Donna. Say hi, woman. What's up? All right, gotta be quiet. Enough. Thank you so much. Uh, see, see, the thing, thing is, we just opened up around here, you know what I'm saying? saying? And, and uh, we've been, been having some problems, problems obviously, you see. I appreciate what y'all did, because these cockroaches would have cleaned me out this season. Speaking of cockroaches, where was your antenna when them niggas were stealing my shit out of stuff? Good. So, the snow got robbed, and she wasn't on alert. A lot of y'all, I don't want y'all to get robbed. So you got to make sure you got your antennas up. Do y'all know what I'm talking about now? Make sure you got your antennas up, or Money Mike going to call you out. <laughs> so read that, uh, Sirach 6 and 7. Sirach chapter 6, verse 7. Uh-huh. If thou wouldest get a friend. If thou wouldest get a friend. Prove him first, uh -huh. and be not hasty to credit you him. You see that? Money Mike was hasty to credit the sister. She didn't have her antennas up. Got it so robbed. A lot of y'all are going to get spiritually robbed because you're not proving these brothers and sisters. You got to make sure they have a pattern of good works, that they are proven to keep the commandments of the Lord. You can't do that in a week. You can't do that in a month. I ain't going to tell you how long you think you need, but I'm telling you, you can't do it short, at least if you want it to be successful. And I'm going to tell you this much. Since I've been in the truth, almost every marriage that you find out about it when they come to the leadership table, it ends up pretty bad, pretty bad. That don't be their last time coming up there. They keep coming week after week, problem after problem. Over and over and over again. Marriage is hard enough as it is. When you do it the wrong way, you just add more headaches to the issue. It's already a mystery, but now you took the puzzle and you just threw the pieces all over the floor. 
least, least if you do it the right way, you got the puzzles in the box. Some of y'all want to put the puzzles in the sandbox. Double trouble. That's what happens. That's what happens. Read it again. Read it again. One more time. Sirach chapter 6, verse 7. Uh-huh. If thou would, what is, get a friend. Read. Prove him first. Prove him first. And be not hasty to credit him. That's the most important part. Don't be hasty. Don't be hasty to credit any brother or sister. We don't see brothers one day they're captain. Next week, they arch Negro. The next week. Seen it happen. So don't be hasty to credit nobody. Make sure you got your antennas up all the time. The Rock 37 and verse 12. So that's the first step. The first step is the proven stage. Don't ask me no detailed questions. Get up off the Micaiah. Get answering for you. All right. <laughs> Read that. Sirach 37 and 12. The book of Sirach, chapter 37, verse 12. Uh huh. But be continually with a godly man. Be what? But be continually with a godly man. So the first attribute that you look for is if this brother or sister is godly. What does that mean? Do they keep the commandments of the Lord? Read. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, uh -huh. whose mind is according to thy mind. You see that, and throughout that proven process, you're able to see if their mind is according to the, it, uh, is according to your mind. Do they want children? Do they not want children? Do they want to stay where you're at? Do they want to move? Do they want a house? Do they do they want a good credit score? Do they want to work? Do they not want to work? All these things you need to ask those questions. You can't do it if the first time you saw them, the lights was off. You ain't going to get a lot of questions. Answer. All right. So that's going on during the, if their mind is according to your mind, take time. Because all of us are very, very intricate creatures. What's up? You had a question? Go ahead. Tell them again, leadership. All right, I got a question as far as we as brothers. How, is, how do we prove our brothers if most of the time we only see our brothers on the Sabbath? Good. Excellent question. Guess what? Is it a law that you can't see your brothers any other day? No. There so you go. We can call the brother and we can go over by the brother's house. There you go. But the question that I'm asking is okay. if the brother is lived further away from you. Right. You know, how do we do that? Prove All it? right. So how do you do that? Right now, we ain't been doing a lot lately because of COVID. But usually, we have family family events. We have outings throughout the week. Like the sisters, they do a good job. They go out every week. Um, you know, you do work together. You study together. You get to meet the brother. And you get to know the brother. The same, well, not exactly the same, because I'm going to go through a few scriptures dealing with that as well. What would you say? Go ahead, Cap. Hey, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, What's your name? <laughs> All right, cool. It's written in the book of life. <laughs> <laughs> All praise. It's on my life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shalom, everybody. Hey, my Facebook What's name is OT, bro. All praise. Uh, we also have the um every um, on Sundays every so often we have the family days. So um as often as possible we get together. Yeah. It's a very valid question. How will we be able to get to know each other if we're never around each other? You better believe when you read from Matthew down to John, James. I mean, you know, uh, what is it? I'm sorry. Uh, Mark, Luke, Matthews, and John, the disciples, they was always with each other. They knew Christ Christ knew who he was dying for. He knew the ones he was teaching, he knew who he was dying for. It wasn't for everybody. It was for those that he prayed for. Remember that? All right, so yeah. How are we ever going to be able, like, we brothers, we go to camp, outside of a camp, it's going to take time. You know what I'm saying? It's going to take time. It's going to take years to get to know that person, to prove whether he was. So I'm going to tell you straight. Like, he gave an example earlier. Brothers, you thought was going to be here until Christ returned. Done fell out. Look, I see you, Shavar. I see you. You see, you see the brothers that was here when you came, and then afterwards they left. They're not here with us no more. So that's what it is. It's going to take time. I'm sorry, Cap. Go ahead. No, you good. You good. Um, but uh, just, just to even piggyback even more on that, um, myself, I always, uh, I'm big on communication. So the Telegram groups, uh, the uh, video groups, because there's more than one way to communicate. When we read the scriptures, like Cap just said, all their communication was either letters or in person. When it, whenever you read about, when you read Malachi three sixteen, when it says those that fear the Lord spake often one to another, that means they literally spake to each other. 
It wasn't no cell phones. Y'all know that, right? What Kim Uriel at? He can tell you about that life before cell phones. <laughs> All right? Um, but people did not have cell phones at one time. <laughs> so when they speak to each other, they literally talk to each other. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So how do we do that today? Telegram messages, text messages, Facebook, all these different ways. That's how you get to know a, a brother or sister. If they live far away, after I've gotten to know you, I may come over your house. I remember um, Cap Captain uh, Kabash and a few other brothers that left, they had came up to Tally and stayed with us after they got to know us for two or three years. You understand what I'm saying? So those bonds will be made and also just by doing the work. We got Men of Valor. We got all these different programs set up. Camp 101, that's that's what that's set up for that proven stage, all right, as as men, as brothers. Um, But dealing with uh, the other proven stage, go to Sirach 26 and verse 23. So we went over that you got to find a godly man or a godly woman, somebody whose mind is according to your mind. The book of Sirach, chapter 26 and verse 23. Uh-huh. A wicked woman. A what? A wicked woman uh -huh. is given as a portion to a wicked man. So, a wicked woman is given in portion to a wicked man. That's why when we hear counsel, and if all we hear is your wife is the devil, your wife is the devil, oh, I'm just looking at you like, mm -hmm. sound good. Sound real good. And door number two opens up. And you the devil. And both y'all the devil. That's really what's going on. Read. But a godly woman. But a what? But a godly woman. Read. Is given to him that feareth the Lord. Uh-huh. A dishonest woman. Contemned shame. But an honest woman will reverence her husband. Now, nah, that's key. It says a godly woman will reverence her husband. You want to see does that sister respect the leadership? Because those are her. Those are her fathers for the time being until she has a spouse, until she has her own Lord. See how she deals with the leadership. Do she come in every week and she cussing out security? She don't help with nobody. She got a she, she got a haughty spirit. Or is she kind? Is she meek? Is she willing to help out in the body? If it's a brother, is it a brother that's helping out? He's always clean up after school. He's there to help. He, he's he's a he's a um, He's a, uh, what's the word? He's a servant unto the other men in the best way that he can during his time before he before he can uh, have rank. Does he attend men of valor? Does he want to be uh, somebody of stature in his truth? Or is he just good sitting there? Those are the things that you got to look at. If you're really looking at that example, is he around? When we have, does he show up for the Sabbath? If, if, if the brother don't show up for the Sabbath, I don't think that's somebody that you should consider. I mean, that's just basic, right? That's that's uh. Do you do you, well, what? What's the first question they ask on the, on the resume? Um, do you have any experience? Sheesh. Did you graduate? Can you read? Yeah, that's what. Can you read? Is do you come to the Sabbath? Can you read? What is your reading level? What's your reading? Right. You got to at least come to the Sabbath. All right. Um, from there, go to um, Proverbs 7 and verse 10. So for a, for a brother, that's certain you want to look for. I mean, for well, for both sides. How do they treat the men and sisters over them? Are they a headache? Are they a help me to the brothers and sisters? i give you an example. Um, Sister um, Ayana, uh, she was in Tallahassee. She went to Atlanta. She was a younger sister. She was in college. When, when my wife had the children, she would always come to the school. She learned how to cook. She learned how to clean. She did all that stuff for my wife. And then she went and she got married. And she does the same thing. But she learned those skills while she was a younger sister. So now he doesn't have, why well, sound like an echo? Now um, the brother doesn't have as many problems. Not saying there's no problems in the marriage. But she had those attributes and those skills, like uh, Officer Kim Yeo was bringing out early. She was willing to learn those things before she got married. If they don't do it before, they ain't going to do it after. Understand that. Y'all get that, right? It ain't going to change later. It's only going to get worse. Only going to get worse, not better. <laughs> Read that, Proverbs 7. Yep, the book of 10. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. Uh -huh. And behold, there met him a woman 
with the attire of an harlot. All right, so this for you brothers. Read. And subtle of heart. So you want to see, how does she dress? Is that the sister that's always borderline in the way she carries herself? Read. She is loud and stubborn. Is she loud? If the sister's telling her to move, is it a problem? She's about to throw hands and slap box. Read. Her feet abide not in her house. Her feet abide not. Do you run into her at the store every day? Like, hey, sis. Oh, you're always out. Never home. Everywhere. Everywhere else except at the crib. Read. Now is she without. Now in the streets. Uh-huh. And lieth. Check, check. And lieth in wait at every corner. Right. So you wanna you wanna see that spirit. What type of spirit does she have? How does she carry herself? How does she dress? Take notice of all those things. Because those are tell, tall, tell, tell signs. Yeah, tell, tell. I want to say something. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. When um, dealing with the uh, proven thing, if you ever have to ask the next person next to you if I should or should not be doing something, nine times out of ten, you should just not do what you're asking about. For instance, this said right here, it said, the woman does these things at night, right? Mm-hmm. So you have situations when you're proven, and maybe it'd be like, uh, because I, I, I had to, I got cut when I was first courting again. I, she, I got cut up. I was like, Hey, brother, you shouldn't be on um, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning talking to her if y'all not married. That's what you do when you married. When you proven, it's done in the day, in the light. Ain't no secret. Because at night, what happened? You can't, you can't tell me 3, 4 <laughs> o'clock in the morning from 12 to 2 or 3 or 4, we only going to be talking about John 3.16. Bruh. <laughs> Stop playing yourself, sister, and brother, stop playing with yourself. Right. Or oh, y'all talking to... <laughs> hey, that was the spirit. I said it how I needed to say it. Hey, hey, but stop playing. Stop playing around. I'm just... We got to be playing, man, for real. Stop all the... Because what, what we're trying, we trying to help you from is a world of damn hurt. Right. We're going to say it plain, man, for real. So when it comes... You got to... Okay. There's a discipline in relationship that you should respect before you actually come together. Where, where y'all have a token together where it's like, man, we actually waited this long and we kept everything cordial. Now let the doors open. I'm gonna tell you everything on my mind, sis. Right. And that's what I had to deal with. <laughs> hey, one time, uh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 it ain't like that. I, hey, I got, I was told, I was told, slow your roll, brother. Slow your roll, sister. It's getting a little too close. Y'all, need, and that was love coming from leadership. Like, right. listen, y'all take y'all time. That's what we're trying to tell y'all. Right. It wasn't going to get like okay. that. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't going to lie. Nah, I, I, I behave. <laughs> I behave. I was right. I was, I was, I was totally bad. But in a sense, what I'm trying to say is, um, it never, we, 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 we were monitored. Right. That's right, a, right. that's a blessing. Right. All right. We had a limit. There was a limit. That's good. Before you get to know that person to the next stages. All right. So, <laughs> back on my topic. Hold on, I got a scripture real quick. Right. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, so the point of everything, well, we're going over. I'm, tr- I'm, I'm just catching the gist of everything. Excuse me, but we don't want you all to be marrying your enemies, all right? Because you your enemies will be doing this. Give me Sirach real quick, chapter twelve, verse sixteen. The book of Sirach, chapter twelve, verse sixteen. Verse read verse eight. Come on. The, these are the Sirach. Uh, he always explained the characteristics of like good and evil. He got into like the details of the mind of, of the enemy, of the good, of the righteous, and such and such. So let's see what he expressed. Read that verse eight. Verse eight. Right. A friend cannot be known in prosperity. You're not gonna know a friend when everything is doing right. Right. That means it's gonna take time to get to know that person. That goes for man and woman, brothers, all of that. All right. Everybody's always around each other when everything is good. Read on. And an enemy cannot be hidden in adversity. And an enemy cannot be hidden in adversity. Meaning it's gonna be you, you won't be able to find that friend when adversity comes. Read on, come on. And in the prosperity of a man, enemies will be grieved. And the prosperity of a man, enemies will be grieved. Meaning when you're doing all right and good, your enemy will hate you. You understand? Read on. That's going into jealousy. All right. So what I'm explaining in the scriptures is check, check. You want to make sure that your spouse. That brother that you've given credit to do not have these characteristics, all right? You got to watch out for these things. The only way you're going to see that is through time. Read on, come on. 
Never but, trust thine enemy. No, 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 no. That end of verse nine. Uh, but, verse nine. Mm-hmm. But in his adversity, even a friend will depart. Okay, now jump down to verse 16. 15. 15. Yeah. For a while he will abide with thee. Mm-hmm. But if thou begin to fall. So learn from what Sirach is saying. He's saying, uh, it's giving a difference between a true friend and a fake friend. All right? Your frenemies. We speak about it all the time. And that also goes with that spouse or that sister, that brother who you're over crediting, all right? Take your time with that sister. Take your time with that brother. Because the grass ain't I'm gonna be real I'm gonna be there's a reality to it. The grass is not greener on the other side. All right. And you have to be prepared to understand the wiles of marriage. It's gonna be trials. It's gonna be troubles in the flesh. It ain't written just because it sounds good or it's a scripture. It's written for advice. Read on, come on. For I, a well, go ahead, go ahead. For a while, he will abide with thee. Uh-huh. But if thou begin to fall, he will not tarry. So you got to have, remember it says in Sirach, two is better than one. So when the other fall, that wife or that brother can pick him up. Are they with you to give you scripture when you out of the spirit? All right. Read on. Come on. An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips. And like I said earlier, we want to make sure that y'all are not marrying enemies, that y'all not growing relationship with your enemies. An uh, enemy will speak. Uh, what it say? Sweetly, sweetly. That's them swoops, them sweet, flattering words. I'm telling you, when y'all in those beginning stages, y'all gonna say everything y'all can to impress each other. Right. I love how your eyebrows arch like that. I love how bushy they are. You got such a nice nose. It's gonna. This sound wrong anyway. It's gonna look nice with kids. Uh, your. I like how big your beard is. Some of y'all take it to the next level, but anyway, it shouldn't. Hey. Keep reading. Come on. Speak, speak, speak sweet with lips. Read on. But in his heart, Uh he imagined how to throw thee in a pit. Because as soon as adversity come or prosperity come, they're either jealous of you or they'll leave you when things happen. And how are you going to know the difference between the two? With experience of knowing that person. Look at Jacob, our forefather. Had four wives, right? Two of them that he loved, or the first one he loved, and the second one that he had, which was her sister, they were both in idolatry. And that was after 14 years of getting to know somebody. So compare that as an example to how quick we want to jump into things today. All right? Read on. Come on. This this is it. Come on. He will weep with his eyes, Uh but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. And you can't have an enemy that you consider to be a friend that's an opportunist, Mm -hmm. all right? Looking for the opportunity to throw your behind under the bus, Mm -hmm. all right? Looking for an opportunity to stab you in the back. That goes for man and man, woman and woman, or from husband and wife, or a brother that's interested in a sister or a sister that's interested in a brother. It takes time with all of this stuff, right? And how do you know that person? With their works. What are they doing? Like Captain was going over. Go ahead, Captain. Mm, That's it. I'm going to give y'all a story that just happened. I'm going to say no name. Here we go. Sister. Sister says she's pregnant. Sister says she's pregnant. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. Sister says she's pregnant. So, the the day of the pregnancy comes, it's uh, it's a bad scenario at the house. Blood everywhere. Things ain't going good. The pregnancy is not going good. Mm. So, the husband loves her, calls the hospital, ambulance comes, picks up. He says, you know, I'm going to stay back and clean up. No, they wouldn't let him get on the ambulance. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm, I hold my peace. <laughs> He's going to stay back and clean up. Clean up the house because it's his real bitch. He's about to get birth to twins. So he want to make sure everything's all right. So he finally gets to the hospital. And things ain't looking good for the babies. He gets frustrated. But the police get there. And they put him in handcuffs and throw him in jail. And he's being charged with uh, uh, so, uh, domestic violence. Apparently, he don't hit this woman. He don't. Uh, he tried to murder the two babies because she had twins. And he don't drag her around the house, apparently, and beat her up. And that caused a miscarriage, apparently. Detective comes. Asking questions to verify the story. And he's listening to the story and ain't adding up to him. He's like, okay, well, she had a miscarriage. The doctors say, hey, 
it ain't no babies here. Because when you have a miscarriage, babies come. They might not be alive, but the babies still come. So the doctor said, ain't no babies here. So the detective says, well, let me go back to the house. Maybe the baby's at the house. Ain't no babies at the house. Detective comes back. Blood work came back. She wasn't pregnant. Never was pregnant. But now he's in jail. Hmm. So, detective says, this ain't adding up. The brother's denying everything. He's like, that didn't happen. I love my wife. I took her to the hospital for nine months. She, she pregnant? What do you mean? Comes back. Brother goes to jail for the night. He gets home, and the truth comes out. She wasn't pregnant the whole time. She did lie to the police. Got the brother thrown in jail. So that's the type of woman that's out there, or brothers anyway, when you don't prove. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's exactly what you said. That's an enemy. This man could have been in jail for years if that detective didn't have some tact and didn't look into the story. Yeah, so that's that. Hey, true story. True yeah, story. that's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch that on True Life. Uh, go to Ciroc 34.9. So, uh, get back on topic. The, story, the, the title of the class is Discretion, the Traits of Wisdom. Discretion, the Trait of Wisdom. So right now we're going into using discretion in the proven stage. We just went over for what men and women should be looking for in their spouse. We're going into the next one thing that you should be looking for. This more so for you sisters uh, proving a man or, or thinking about proving a brother. Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 34 and verse 9. Uh-huh. A man that had traveled. A what? A man that had traveled. Uh-huh. Knoweth many things. Read. And he that had much experience will declare wisdom. So if you're a sister and you're examining a brother, you want to see, does this brother ever leave his house? Or his couch. Traveling ain't going to the school. Is the brother willing to get out and go? And I ain't talking about for the newer brothers. They, they may can't travel. But these brothers, the ranking men, and they sit there and stay still. You want to examine that. Why? Keep reading. He that hath no experience. He that what? He that have no experience. Read. Know it little. If you have no experience, you don't know anything. Read. But he that had traveled uh -huh. is full of prudence. You see that? Somebody that's traveled is full of prudence. Read. When I traveled, I saw many things. Uh -huh. And I understand more than I can express. So, does he travel? Is he out? Is he doing the work of the Lord? Or is he sitting there laying like a bump on a log? Not gaining any experience. Not learning anything. Not gaining wisdom. Not learning discretion. You want to look at these things. From there, go to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 12. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 12. Giving y'all traits that you want to look for in the proven stage using discretion. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 12. Uh -huh. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord. So you want to know the brothers or sisters who do things. Read it again. And we beseech you, brethren. And we beseech you, brethren. To know them which labor among you. You want to know who is laboring in the Lord. Does the sister do anything or does she come in and her, her works for the day is she, she, she did her hair wrap. Nice. Is that her works? Or is she helping? Is she laboring for the body? What is she doing for the body? Those are the things that you need to access. All right. Is that it on that? And are over you in the Lord uh -huh. and admonish them. And admonish them. So, we're going to move into the next uh, element of discretion in the truth. This part, the most important one. We must use discretion in overcoming our sins. A lot of us, we don't use discretion in overcoming our sins. Because remember, discretion in short terms is making good choices. A lot of us know we deal with certain things and we put ourselves in the worst situations possible to get over it. For example, you may have grew up, well, we, we knew a brother in the past that was with us. Brother knew he was heavy in the drug game or whatnot, so he knew for him to truly come into this truth, to put that new wine in a new bottle, he had to move. He had to move, so he left the city that he was in, started a new life. 
we've seen other brothers and sisters. They come into the truth. They realize they got a lust problem. Like, you know what? I can't have this smartphone. It's the devil. I can't do it. Um, some of you have uh, issues with the children. You know that child, you're not going to get custody of them. The mama raised them a certain way. She going to try to end up putting you in jail. You got to let that go. You got to let it go. Whatever it is, you got to use discretion in how you deal with the various array of situations that we all come into. So let's get into it. Sirach chapter 37 and verse 27. The book of Sirach chapter 37 verse 27. Uh -huh. My son, prove thy soul in thy life. Do what? Prove thy soul in thy life. You got to prove your own soul in this life. Read. And see what is evil for it. You see that? You got to see what's evil for it. Read. And give not that unto it. For all, for all things are not profitable for all men. You see that? All things are not profitable for all men. What tastes good to you don't taste good to me. What's expedient for you is not expedient for me. You got to know what makes you tick. If a sister can't wear uh, <laughs> where, uh yeah, spaghetti strap get you going, you got to know how to turn your head the other way. If uh, sisters, if flip flops is what gets you going, you got to make sure you, you turn the other way or whatever it is. I'm just being, I'm being uh, goofy. But whatever it is that you deal with, you got to know how to keep yourself from falling into that lust, into that trap. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 23. Prime example if you are alcoholic and the brothers are drinking after, after, after class, you don't need to be over there. You don't need to be over there. If you deal, you knew you used to have a smoking spirit, and you over your family house and everybody smoked, you don't need to go over there. Use discretion. You know what's going on. You know what's going to happen. You must use discretion. But a lot of times we don't do that. Prime example you just used, Cap. You know you and this sister are proven. You know she's beautiful to you. You beautiful to her. And you know you're supposed to have a a, a chaperone. Then you 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 like, hey, well, let's just we're gonna chill in the room for 20 minutes. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I just want to get to talk to you alone. Yes. Right. I See your face to face. You. you know we can't really meet each other the right way with this chaperone. Mm -hmm. You know we're cramping my style. <laughs> so you know you go in there, y'all try to talk, and we all adults, and now marriage jacked up. Hey, that's why Moses wrote that law for your behind yeah. for your spirit. If a man entices a maid and is not betrothed and lie with her, that was for you. That was for your spirit. How you handle it? Now you know your spirit. You got to marry her, even if she's your enemy. <laughs> yeah, I'm mm, that's heavy. Read that. First Corinthians ten verse twenty three. Uh huh. All things are lawful for me. Read. But all things are not expedient. You see that all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. Read. All things are lawful for me, uh -huh. but all things edify not. Read. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. So we got to be able to understand what's going to trigger those certain spirits to cause you to sin. What's going to tap you into that, to, to the wrong things. You got to know that. Only you. That's why I said prove your own soul. Nobody else know what, what makes you trigger. Brothers got some weird triggers. All right. This is do as well. So you got to know that. Once you know it, cut it off. All right, from there, go to um, Sirach 21 and 2. We almost done. The book of Sirach, chapter 21, verse 2. Uh-huh. Flee from sin. Do as what? Flee from sin. The Bible says flee from sin. Read. As from the face of a serpent. Uh-huh. For if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion. So understand, it says, if thou comest too near it, meaning what? You're using discretion, meaning you have a keen sense of what's going to happen. You know it already. But a lot of us, we don't use that. How do we know that? Because the no fellowship group continues to get filled up. Number one cause, fornication. Over and over and over and over and over again. Fornication, 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 fornication. Um, Sirach chapter, I mean, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 27. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 27. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 27. 
Can a man take fire in his bosom uh -huh. and his clothes not be burned? So can you take fire in your bosom and not be burned? Meaning, can you play with sin and and not fall fall to whatever it is that you're dealing with? You think if you're an alcoholic, you can hold a 40 ounce in your hand alone at home all night just to challenge yourself? Like, you know what? I'm going to challenge myself tonight. I'm going to hold this thing all night. I'm going to show, show y'all. No. No, that's 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 being that's being an idiot. What did Joseph do when when he was tempted by the Egyptians? What he did? He ran. He literally ran up out of there. A lot of brothers run to take their clothes off and stay in the bed. That's what we see in today. But our old, our forefathers of old, they ran up out of there. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. I never forget, Bishop said, I don't even teach to that side of the room because he know what he deal with. You got to think, Bishop, the wisest man on the face of the earth, he has a lot of power. If he wanted, because you see some of these other camp leaders, yeah, yeah. what they doing, eight, ten different wives. <laughs> right. Meanwhile, Bishop say, hey, that's why these sisters, they think I'm, I'm the devil. You think he do that? He, he don't want you sisters not to like him. But he do it on purpose. It's wisdom. It's discretion. That's being a good leader. But a lot of you don't understand that. Y'all don't understand that. Read that again. Can a man take fire in his bosom uh -huh. and his clothes not be burned? Read. Can one go upon hot coals? Can any of y'all walk on hot coals? Read. And his feet not be burned? Who can do that? Because if you do, you need to be in the circus. <laughs> right. So all of us can fall detriment to this thing. That's what it's telling you. You got to improve your own soul. Know what you deal with and stay away from it. Right? So you zeal trying to stay away from the water, right? I mean, from the bread right now. So he can't be around the bread. Don't bring the bread around. He can't even eat breaded wings. <laughs> <laughs> Better eat me some me. bread, though. <laughs> go from there. Go to um, Sirach 9 and 3. The Rock chapter 9 and verse 3. Hey, we ain't going get, to get to go into my favorite topic, marriage. Right. The Rock 9 and 3, real quick. The book of Sirach chapter 9, verse 3. Uh-huh. Meet not with an harlot, lest thou fall into her snares. So, the Bible says do what? Meet not with an harlot. Don't meet with an harlot. Read. Lest thou fall into her snares. Read. Use not much the company of a woman that is a singer. Uh-huh. Lest thou be taken with her attempts. Read. Gaze not on a maid. Do what? Gaze not on a maid. So the Bible says, gaze not upon a maid. Don't even look. Because a lot of you look, what happens leads to, leads to other things. They call it gateway drugs in the world. Right? In, the, in, in, in health. You know, they say you smoke weed, and uh, weed leads to smack. I mean, uh, not smack, crack. <laughs> Y'all might have called that. Y'all called it smack back in the day? <laughs> That's a video. <laughs> well, weed leads to vaping. Vaping leads to this, leads to that. So all the gateway. But the Bible's letting you know something spiritually. When you look upon a maid, it's going to lead to something. You see her, then you talk to her, then you take her to the house. Then you got a baby. Then you got a baby. Now she don't want to give it up no more. Then you got to commit adultery. Right. Now you're on child support. Now you're out the body. All because you gazed upon a woman. Or you could have sprinted up out of there like Joseph. And you'd be good. All your choice. It's your choice. You guys on that? All right. Cool. All right. So we're going to hit this real quick marriage real quick. We got to hit this one because uh, I had posted a video. I want to comment on it. I ain't comment on it yet. First Corinthians 7 and verse 3. So we got to use discretion in our marriages. In our marriages, we have to use discretion. And all of this is still under the banner of discretion in the truth. We're going to deal with the biggest issue that I see in the Israelite marriage. Read that. 1 Corinthians 7 and 3. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 3. Uh -huh. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. What happened? Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. Let me see. I want one of these single brothers. Mordecai, what does that mean? Soldier Mordecai. Sex. Well, okay, sex what? 
You ain't answer the question, brother. You just said sex. Hold, don't hold it back. Render due benevolence. benevolence. Do not hold back sex. From who? Your wife. The husband don't hold back from the wife. The wife don't hold it back from the husband. So that means they supposed to. You supposed to be able to have sex when you want to. Yes. Whenever you want. Yes. Oh. <laughs> what? Sorry, I was I was checking Telegram. <laughs> Hey, you asking the wrong brother. You asking the brother that ain't uh, married. Hold on, hold on. When when can't you have sex with your wife? During the time, okay, fasting. Right. I heard you. You cheated. Um, when she's on her time, her period. Right. And after she has a baby. All right, all praise. All praise. Give that brother a round of applause. All, praise, all, all praise. praise. Good job, brother. Good job. Hey, you single, right, Mordecai? Hey, that's a wise man right there. That's a man of understanding. He got them commandments down. All right, so read that again. Verse 3. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, uh -huh. and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Read. The wife had not power of her own body, uh -huh. but the husband. And likewise also the husband had not power of his own body, but the wife. Mm -hmm. Defraud ye not one the other. Do what? Defraud ye not one the other. Now, the Bible is going to show you something. You sisters and you brothers, if you're using the spirit of discretion, you're going to take this into consideration. Read. Defraud ye not one the other. Don't defraud one another, meaning withhold sex from your partner. Read. Except, Except it, it be with consent uh -huh. for a time. Read. That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. Read. And come together uh -huh. again that Satan tempt you not. That what? That Satan tempt you not. So, read. For your incontinency. So, who wants to explain that part for Satan? Read that part again. Let Satan... That Satan tempt you not for uh -huh. your incontinency. Who who can break down that part? One of you single brothers. Come on now. I know y'all. I mean, I want a married brother to break that down. Married brother. All right, Makai. Still newlywed. <laughs> Ain't had an argument yet. <laughs> Don't be scared, huh? No. It meaning if you're not giving it up, the other part, the other party is gonna feel like, well, shoot, if I can't get it from you, I gotta get it from somewhere. Okay. Okay, that's what it says. All right. Absolutely correct. Hey, play that video. Play that video. Play the video, brother. <laughs> no, brother, I sent you this. Up. Come on. <laughs> Contract we signed, signed each other. other. I now, Paul, um, this brother and his wife, um, they have a podcast. They do a lot of different cool stuff together. They have a a decent relationship in the world. Um, they they married. They not having a Jada uh, Jada and Will Smith relationship. Entangled. They trying to do it the right way to some extent. Uh, I posted this the other day. I did in the married group. I don't really care how they how they got married. I didn't even care about that part. I posted it for what else he said. Go ahead, press play. <laughs> Based, Based on, on our marriage laws, laws and uh, the, the, the contract we signed with each other, other. Right. Turn it up, some to have, have sex, sex with anybody, anybody else. else. Right. So, so these urges, urges that come, I have, I have to share them, them with the one person I decide to spend the rest of my life with. Pause. Right. Hey, that's that's all I need to hear. So look, sisters, y'all gotta understand. I, I, I don't. Men like sex. Men, do y'all like sex? They like sex. Women used to like it because in the world, every brother gets kicked out of the body for fornication. They ain't having sex by themselves. So. I'm I'm kind of confused. Are you? I, I'm just being honest. I'm confused. All these brothers getting kicked out of fornication, and then you got married brothers that can't get none. It's weird to me. That's kind of backwards. Y'all sisters need to repent. Start it back. Start it back at the beginning and play it again. I am, I am not, not allowed, allowed <laughs> based on, on our marriage, marriage laws, laws and uh -huh. the, the, the contract, contract we signed, signed with each other right. to, to have, have sex with anybody else. else. Right. So, so these urges, urges that come, I have, have to share them with the one, one person I decide to spend the rest of my life, life with. Right. So, so that, that, that brings me back to my, 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 my soundbite. Okay. Right? I, I don't understand, and this is what we can discuss. Paul, because I don't really care what else he said. Well, no, I won't say anything that she said. Keep it right there. You can keep it up on the screen. So what he said was, basically, we don't have any other outlet. Sisters, we don't have no other outlet. Y'all are the only person in this whole world that we can come to. 
So when you when you say you're tired or you don't want to or whatever it is, whatever excuse, understand you are the only. What, what Kevin Hart say? Help me. Please. I got the white man on my back. I got a bad credit score. I got kids complaining. The toilet won't flush. Help me. I just want to ease my mind. Some of y'all go five minutes. Some of you 30 minutes. You want to ease your mind for however long it is. No matter. And the one place that the Bible tells me I'm supposed to render due benevolence, you're not living up to the expectation. Can't happen. Can't happen. Same thing for you men, because it happens on the men's side, too. Y'all can't hold back either. That is the only place they can go, even though it never happens. All right? So, understand that. Men, because it happens for men, too, right? No. All right? Y'all have to please the woman. I know you don't want to please her sometimes. You're tired. You, you're hard from work. You got to counsel brothers. You got to edit videos. You got to do fly missions. You got to go to camp. You got to travel. You got to write reports. You got to counsel. I know you got to do a lot, man, but you got to please her. Y'all understand that? Y'all understand that? Are y'all up to that task? All right. Keep pressing play. Calm y'all side. As, as a, a woman, woman because, because I don't, I don't, don't want to say it's a man versus, versus woman thing, thing but, but a lot, lot of women do complain, oh, my husband's always on me, why is he always on me? Mm -hmm. if, if sex is, is going to be a chore for you that you don't really want to do, why do women constantly push monogamy on men? men? If, if you, you know, know that you don't want to have to deal with I didn't care about the monogamy part all that, because we know we're going to keep it scriptural. We're supposed to have one wife right now. Y'all understand that, right? So all that, I ain't care about none of that. ain't no pushing monogamy. All you brothers want to get married? Your sisters show sure enough want to get married. Every year, the brothers don't want to go up there at Passover. It'd be the sisters. Long line of sisters. Long line. They was fighting to get on patient saints. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something on that. Because some, most of them sisters, a lot of them sisters, they like the accolades mm -hmm. of what that marriage, the, the first beginning stages of it, whether it be talking all night, which you shouldn't be doing, um, the... The planning, the wedding, the nice garment, the ceremony. Oh yes, I'm married now. That's what y'all really into until you see the the yeah, say it was yesterday, the whatever, right? He has a nice beard on that day, made his afro nice, and then when reality kick in, the problems come in. Yep. Go ahead. All right, real quick, go to Proverbs five and eighteen, real quick. We're gonna we're gonna So that video, if y'all watch that video, basically the sister says she didn't know what she was getting into. I didn't know it's a lot. The whole body is a BS, all right? It wasn't scriptural. It wasn't scriptural. The Bible says you got to do due benevolence. And I'm going to show you how you're supposed to give due benevolence. Proverbs 5 and 18. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 18. Uh-huh. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Read. Let her be as the loving hind uh -huh. and pleasant roe. Read. Let her breast satisfy thee at uh, all times. Read. Be and be thou ravished. Always. And be thou what? And be thou ravished always. The with Bible her love. says you should be ravished always with the love of your wife. Ravished always. Now give me that definition real quick, because Bishop finna come on. So it shouldn't be a chore. A ravish don't sound like a chore. You ever heard the word chore and ravish in the same sentence? All right. Give me the definition of ravish, please. Hurry up before the class come on. Check, check. Come on, come on. All right, here we go. Ravish. That ain't it. All right, here we go. Here we go. Read that definition. Scroll down. Be ravish with your wife. Read. Uh, synonyms: assault, assault, force. assault, force, force, rape, rape, violate. Now, we know we ain't we ain't raping nobody. We ain't having no marital rape. But violate. We gonna keep everything within the commandment. But the Bible said ravish. So what is he trying to tell us from this? Let's see. Let me see if somebody over here got any spiritual eyes. Let me see. I Kim, Let me hear you. What do you think that says, Soldier Kim?
Oh, you nervous? Oh, uh, you on spot? No, uh, it means um, just go hard. <laughs> <laughs> that brother good. Hey, give that brother a round of applause. Give that brother a round of applause. All praises. <laughs> All praises. <laughs> Ain't no other way to answer it. Uh, hey, did we con, uh? Brother, con. It was another definition. Did you get the other one? Uh, that's all man. I sent you. Okay, get the other one. Go hard. <laughs> okay, here we go. Look, these are the synonyms because we don't want to use the words rape, violate. Nah, Those ain't, ain't good words. Ain't Let's read these. Words related to ravish. Uh huh. Spell bin. Uh huh. Bewitch. Uh huh. Enthrall. Enthrall. Read. Draw. Draw. Read. Allure. Allure. Fascinate. Uh huh. Mesmerize. What? Mesmerize. Read. Trance. Uh huh. Captivate. Captivate. Please. Please. Entrance. Uh huh. Delight. Hypnotize. Overjoy. Uh huh. Charm. Uh huh. Enrapture. Uh huh. Hold. Attract. Magnetize and transform. So, if you didn't know all of those words up there, that's how Hebrews 13 and 4 should be applied. Get them all out. Round of applause for oh, that praises. one. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, all of what we was, uh, Captain was speaking over. Remember in um, Hebrews, marriage is honorable and all. What we talking about right now is the bed being undefiled. Right. Meaning, when you tell her I'm going to tear that behind up, <laughs> she should look at you and smile. <laughs> straight up. She ready for it. And that makes the world go around for the nation of Israel. Right. Straight up. Good marriages. So, lesson learned, sisters. Alright, last scripture, Sirach 33 and 29. Sirach 33 and 29. So, Ending this class, uh, discretion, the traits of wisdom. Uh, I wanted to go into um, one more topic, but we didn't have time. So we'll end it with this scripture. Sirach 33 and 29. Read the book that. of Sirach, chapter 33, verse 29. Uh-huh. Be not excessive toward any. Be not excessive toward any. Read. And without discretion. And what? And without discretion. And without discretion. Read. Do nothing. Do nothing. So make sure you always have the spirit of discretion and discernment in everything you do. In your marriage. On the job, when you're proving, when you're counseling, when you're making new friends, when you're out and about, always have the spirit of discretion with you. All right? Hey, Kev. Hey, I just got to read one more because you and the spirit, we read this earlier. I was saying it's Yes, sir. Get that in uh, Exodus 1 and 11. We read this earlier. Brothers be out there working 12 hours a day. What you say? We got to do reports. Right, right. Beat, Go beat to hurt. camp. Beat, beat, hurt. Yeah. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 1 verse 11. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them. But the more Esau afflicts us. The more they multiplied and grew. How are we multiplying and growing? Right. All these afflictions. Brother be lifting uh, 5,000 canisters a day on his job. I ain't going to mention no name. <laughs> <laughs> the more we get afflicted, the more we grow. All right? So, what's that saying? You always, hey, brothers always have energy for that. All right? <laughs> let you know. Let y'all know, sisters. Brothers always got energy for that. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.